a 50 caliber CO2 revolver for self-defense. Let's check it out. Guys, when it comes to self-defense, it's a basic human right. Uh, the Second Amendment just acknowledges that right. But there are a lot of people, not only here in the U.S., but also around the world that don't have access to self-defense options. I've been looking at a lot of different ones, and one that I actually came across is the TR-50. This is a 50 caliber revolver. It's CO2 powered. It has a number of different ammunition choices, including a pepper ball but also steel and rubber balls. This is a great option for those who just can't own a firearm or who are just looking for a less lethal self-defense option. Now I said less lethal instead of less than lethal because this is a very powerful option. Now this is the TR-50 and it's the 11 joules model. There's a standard model that goes out to about 300 feet per second. The 11 joules model goes up to 450 feet per second, and there can be modifications to make this almost twice as powerful. And we've done a lot of testing. We're gonna demonstrate a lot of things for you guys, and honestly, I was very impressed with the results. Now, is this a legitimate self-defense option? Is this something that you should choose? Well, we're gonna talk about it and let you decide. Because let's face it, guys, you bring in a less than lethal or less lethal option against a firearm, and you're gonna be undergunned. Well, the TR-50, this is made by Umarex, and so it really has some pretty nice quality to it. You know, sometimes with these guns, they can feel cheap. Uh, the molded polymer all the way throughout, it just has a really good feel to it. I really like the grip, has a lot of texturing. It is large. I mean, it's definitely not something that you're gonna conceal easily, and yet, you know, it could be done. The one thing about this gun, again, is that it uses the 50 caliber pellets. Now, your standard paintball pellets are 68 caliber. They're much larger. This is the 50 caliber, it's a smaller diameter, and it does come with a pack of these practice, kind of a rubber ball. But this is the easy way just to bring this up, and the cylinder just pops right out. Uh, and so this is your magazine. It holds six rounds. And again, there's a number of different choices, but it just slips in there and you put six in. Very simple to do. Uh, then when it comes to putting in your CO2 right here at the bottom, just open up the grip, and then you can just insert a CO2 cartridge in there. Now, you wanna put it in with the bottom end first because this part has the tip that pierces it. Uh, one thing they recommend is putting a little bit of lubrication on the end and that way it just helps to seal this up. Uh, I did that at first, and then when I was down at the range, uh, I didn't seal that up, and yet we had really good performance out of it. But that's just highly recommended, and it'll be more efficient. But just drop it in, and then you put in your end cap. Now this, again, has the piercing element, but it will not pierce the cylinder. Uh, and so right here, you can leave this indefinitely loaded, and um, you're ready to go. And then all you have to do is to hit the bottom and it'll even say push. And so you just give it a good hit. And when you do, a little thing pops out right here, a little indicator, and it lets you know that it's ready. But you can set it just like this and leave it for as long as you want to. And then when you're ready, you're ready to go. So I, I kind of like that feature. It also comes with four additional magazines. Uh, and on the Umarex website, these run about $9.95. So that gives you a $50 you know, increase, or at least a $40 increase uh, over the cost of the handgun itself. Now again, this is the 11 joules model. And it's a little more expensive than the standard. But here you see it's marked right here, 11 joules. Uh, and the TR-50 does come in a paintball style marker. 
And so this is just a different type gun. And I opted for that. One thing too with the end here, the first time I loaded it, I had a real hard time getting this open. And it does come with a small wrench. So once this has been shot and you know you still have a little bit of fuel in there, it can lock it up a little bit. Uh, one thing you do is, is when this indicator pops out, and we'll demonstrate all that when we get to the range, you just push it back in and it releases all the fuel. And then you can typically don't need this to be able to open it. Now it does have a Picatinny rail right here at the front and on top. And so you can put a light on here and it will take a light. Let's see if we can get the right spot for it. And it'll fit on the rail. So now you have a light option. And then you can put a optic on the top. And of course, you know, there's a lot of different choices to be able to put optics on here. This one's a little bit high. But you could put a lower optic on here. And now you have optics and you have light which just gives you a better self-defense option. Uh, but these rails do work, and while they are polymer, uh, they're pretty sturdy. And then we have just a vent, which is stylized. Uh, the sights, low profile sights, this is more of a point and shoot. Uh, it'll still get out there to about 25 yards. Uh, you know, you won't have near as much of an impact, but up close, uh, this makes a devastating option. Uh, I was honestly surprised at how well it did at the range. Now there are upgrade kits to this, and the and it'll really increase the velocity. I mean, considerably, um, up to 600 feet per second. But one of the problems is uh, is that you use more CO2, so you're going to have less shots. I think with the standard version, it says that it'll do 60. Uh, with this version, with it being upgraded, um, I've got about four of these magazines through it before it started going down. And that was using just the standard balls like this, just the rubberized balls. Uh, if you go with more of the self-defense ammunition, which is like this uh, home wrecker right here, or the Devastator, this has a steel ball in a uh, plastic sleeve. These really work well. <laughs> I mean, they are hard hitting. And one thing that was funny was when you shoot this, it actually sounds very much like a gun. You don't have to have hearing protection, but it's really loud. It's like having hearing protection on and shooting a firearm. I mean, it, it's a pretty loud sound. So this is not really a very discreet silent option, but that actually could be beneficial if you were going to use this for self-defense. Now, if you're just going to get out and plink and play around, you know, the standard TR-50 is, is fine. Uh, but if you want something to really upgrade or you just want to have more fun with different type options, uh, this makes a great one. Now, one thing that I didn't have uh, is pepper balls. Now, they have the pepper balls. They even have some with little fins on the back, uh, and those really work well as far as a self-defense option. So it gives you a lot of choices, and there's a bunch of other. There, is, there are even just standard steel balls and aluminum projectiles, all kind of different shapes. I mean, there's a lot of different choices uh, for ammunition with these. And I'll be honest, guys, I didn't know about this until I saw it on Nothing Fancy. He's been doing a lot of air gun reviews or has in the past different type self-defense options and this was one that he used so I just ordered it and got it in and I've been having a blast with it. There is a holster available and this is one that just fits in and you have a little uh, paddle here so it does have some retention. Uh, it has a small little belt at the back and this is one of the kind of similar to tech lock and it'll lock into place uh, and we're going to demonstrate this at the range. Uh, we're also going to demonstrate how to shoot six rounds and then how long it takes to actually reload. Uh, you know, because we want to give a lot of different options. Now, we did shoot quite a few things uh, just to give you some ideas on penetration, on accuracy, and velocity. And we're going to go through all that when we get to it. But here I ordered 250 of those rubber type balls. I'll tell you guys, I mean, even these rubber balls, uh, it's amazing what kind of penetration you can get in ballistic gelatin. That's one of the things we tried. All right, we've got our polymer balls, uh, we have the devastators, and we have some wrecking balls. And we have our cylinders, we have some CO2, and we have our wrench. Uh, when you're taking this off after you've shot it, sometimes you need a wrench to be able to pull it off. But, I mean, it's just so simple to use. And, of course, you want to make sure the piercing is in the uh, screw-in cap. So you want to put it in kind of backwards. Go ahead and tighten it down 
and it will not uh, pierce the CO2 cartridge until you bump it. And that's one of the cool things about it. So we just take it and bump it, and then you'll see this little dot come out, and that'll let you know that it is activated. Put our lever down. We're going to go ahead and start out with some polymer balls first. When it comes to loading, I load them through the front, especially some of the specialty ammo, uh, the back where you have your little locks that actually rotate the cylinder. Uh, this way, I know it's coming out this end. Real simple. Uh, the polymer balls go in really easy. Uh, the more specialized ammunition is a little more difficult, but you just push it through. And it's really nice that they have extra cylinders or extra little magazines that go with this. Just gives you a lot more capability right up front. And when it comes to the Devastators, and of course they have that ball bearing in there, and again you want to put it through the front, they go in really easy. And those balls face the front. This little sleeve just carries that ball, gives it a little bit of uh, stability. And when it comes to the home wreckers, they have a gas seal around them or some kind of silicone rubber seal, uh, so they're a little more difficult to put in. In fact, at first, I didn't think they would work. But what you do, go ahead and set them in there. Uh, they won't go all the way, and you've got to have them all the way in before it'll close. Uh, it will not close on the cylinder. So once I get this down, then I take it and I just press it. Just make sure it gets it really flush. And what that's going to do is going to make it a little more power to put these out. So I feel like the velocity is going to suffer a little bit with these. Then quick to load, again, the little locked area, you want to put it toward the back. Bring down your little latch and it'll lock right in. And now we're ready to go. We have an average of 460 feet per second, and that's with the polymer balls. Now, actually, I was aiming right about here, so just a couple of inches high, and of course, I was only about five yards, about 15 feet. But, you know, for self-defense or if you're trying to do something to get somebody away, I mean, it's not a terrible group, especially with these sights. Same distance, we're going to try the Devastator, just see if there's any change in accuracy. We're going to shoot just a little bit lower, see if we can get a good group. Now, Devastators, I was aiming about right here, and I put a really decent group here, but I think we're losing our CO2 here. Uh, and I think these take a little bit more power for the CO2, but we had that one, it kind of was a little bit weak. But five shots right here were pretty decent. We've got some ballistic gel. We're going to just test it out. And this is some that I had for another project. We're just going to see what it'll do to this ballistic gel. We're going to start out with our polymer first. And, you know, we're about 10 feet, so, you know, just a really contact distance. That's pretty impressive that it'll actually penetrate the jail. It only went in about a half inch, but I wouldn't want to be hit with that because the ballistic jail simulates the, you know, the human flesh. And this is clear ballistics. This stuff is great for doing anything. And we really appreciate clear ballistics for sending this. Uh, it gives us a lot of ability to test different things, even 50 caliber polymer balls. <laughs> At the same distance, we're going to test the devastators. Now that first one bounced out, but the ball went in. Uh, you can see it in there. Uh, but this took the entire capsule with them. <laughs> That's kind of crazy. Uh, and there's another one over here, so another one must have fallen apart. But if that penetrates the skin like that, I mean, that's pretty devastating. Thus, the Devastator. I think one of the most impressive things is the penetration into ballistic gelatin. Uh, these steel balls went in about an inch. 
Uh, and of course, the plastic kind of stayed back. Uh, with the polymer, they even went in about a half inch. And so that gives you just a good idea, you know, if you're shooting especially on bare skin or somebody has a t-shirt on, I mean, this is going to be extremely painful. Uh, and if it inserts, I mean, they're going to start bleeding. They're going to think they've been shot. Uh, and they have been shot. <laughs> it's just not with a regular gun. Now we're going to just shoot some styrofoam. It went through the cardboard, so this shouldn't be an issue at all. Uh, there is a plastic drum behind it, which should stop it. not a bad group. It looks like with the polymer balls you're going to be able to get at least three cylinders, maybe four. Uh, when you start putting in the home wrecker or the devastators, uh, it seems to slow it down. It spends more gas to get the pressure out. So, you know, the polymer balls are definitely going to be more bang for your buck, plus they're a heck of a lot cheaper. Now we're going to test out the Umarex holster that goes with the TR-50. It has one of those paddle releases on it, and then we're going to do a mag reload. And we're going to see how fast we can do it. One of the problems I had, which this is something I just went ahead and wanted to demonstrate, is that when I was putting the cylinder in, I was trying to put it in the wrong direction. So you're going to really want to make sure that you have this going in the right direction when you're putting it back in. So let's try it again. Now we're going to have the cylinder unpierced. So we're going to have to snap it, and then we're going to fire shots, and then we're going to change our magazine, again checking out the holster. Not bad. Just need to make sure that you put it in the right way. Of course, no test would be complete without shooting a watermelon. So we have the polymer, we have the devastators, we have the home wreckers, we have a fresh cartridge. We're going to check it out. Let's check it out. We're going to start out with a polymer and we're going to put six rounds in it, see what it does. actually split the run right here and we're going to cut it open in a minute we're going to test the other rounds next we're trying the home wrecker we haven't shot those yet we'll see how it goes Yeah, I think because they're really tight in the cylinder, it was a lot different the way it shot. In fact, a couple of those went off pretty quick. And last but not least, the Devastators. I feel like the polymer rounds actually seemed to really split it. These kind of just went in, but they were a little bit erratic as far as the accuracy. Uh, the polymer seemed to be really good. So we're going to split this right down the middle. Now this is the front half. Uh, we see that the polymer balls right here together. And this is really mushed up. Here we have just one of the empties of the uh, home wrecker. And we have some of the, just the pieces where it came loose from the ball itself. Halfway through, the polymer went through it. That's pretty good. In fact, we have three here. We may have more. And it really just mushed this end up over here, up here at the top. And one of the steel balls went all the way through to the other side. So it went all the way through this watermelon and stopped at the rind. That's pretty cool. Here we have one of the devastators that uh, got really close to the rind as well and still in the plastic. We found another devastator still intact. One of the steel balls. I mean, this penetrated really well. So the steel balls are going all the way through while the polymer balls are going over halfway through with a lot of the rounds. 
It's pretty impressive. Uh, a lot of this ammunition went all the way through uh, right to the rind, the second rind. And so that, that's pretty good going all the way through the watermelon. And uh, one thing about it, this watermelon is absolutely delicious. And um, I'm gonna make myself sick because I keep eating it. I might eat the whole thing. One thing I do wanna show you, this came out uh, while I was changing magazines a minute ago. It's just press fit in there. You may wanna glue that in if you have issues of this coming out. Now I did find three of the Devastators and you can reuse them. So they are a little bit expensive. And so if you can find them or you have a place that, you know, where your backstop has a little less vegetation, you can find these again and just use them again. Now the standard TR-50, that's the paintball marker, runs about $109, give or take, according to where you buy it. Um, this one runs about $169. So, you know, there is a, a pretty good upgrade. But if you're looking for self-defense, this is definitely the option to choose. And you do get the four magazines. You do get, I think it's 50 of the rubber balls. And then, of course, the other options that are available, like the Devastators, the home wreckers, pepper balls, the steel, you know, fend ball. I mean, there's just so many different choices. But let's talk about this as a self-defense option. Um, you know, after we've seen what it'll do to ballistic gelatin, I mean, this could possibly uh, actually penetrate skin. Now, you've got clothes involved, and that could definitely stop it. But aiming really toward the face or toward the groin, this could be really something else. I mean, to me, somebody breaking down your door, uh, especially if you live in a city, and of course, you need to check your local laws before you know you purchase this for self-defense because there could be restrictions. But if there's restrictions on firearms or you just don't feel comfortable with a firearm, this could be an option. It could give you at least some chance. And I'll tell you guys, you unload six rounds, especially with a fresh cartridge, when this is really going strong. It's gonna be seriously painful for whoever you shoot. And I think that's one of the big things about this is that, you know, especially if they're unarmed and they won't know if this is a gun or not. The pepper ball option is going to be a great option because, you know, once they break, I mean, and that dust gets in their eyes, they're going to be pretty much incapacitated. The problem is, guys, if you have to really use this in a self-defense situation and somebody is armed or they, ha they just get mad when you shoot them, I mean, that is definitely one of the possibilities. And you need to weigh that out for your self-defense option. It's just like carrying just pepper spray. Some people are not affected by pepper spray. It really comes down to if you're just going to allow yourself to be a victim or you're at least going to have a fighting chance. And to me, this gives you a fighting chance, especially if, if you don't have a firearm. Am I recommending this for self-defense? Again, that's going to be up to you to decide. I mean, for me personally, a firearm is the ultimate. Uh, but if you want a non-lethal option, something that at least could give you some time, give you a little chance, this could be a really great tool to have in your toolbox. Now, the 11 Joule version is the one that you want if you want any kind of self-defense option. Uh, and this is put out by Modern Combat Sports, and it's training for engagement T4E. And so this is a special edition for Humorex. So guys, the Humorex TR50 11 Joules. Is this a great self-defense option? Well, it's very impressive in what it can do. And uh, honestly, with an unarmed assailant, I mean, you're doing pretty good. Uh, magazine changes are not too slow and a lot of different options for your projectiles. So it's a lot of fun at the range, a lot of fun just getting out and playing around. But also it could be a very useful tool in a bad situation. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. been looking into some different non-lethal lethals lethal lethal what the
store this, put it wherever you want to, and you don't have to worry about it. Did I turn this back upside down and this way and this way and this way? Well, if you were close, I'd let you have some, but go ahead, go to the store, buy your watermelon. Good for you. Get you away from your computer. <laughs> Good stuff. Mm-hmm.